So against all odds, the video I released last year called The Call of Duty Iceberg Explained Remastered did pretty well. And after I released that video, I thought I was done with Call of Duty Icebergs. I mean, it was two and a half hours long. What more can I talk about? Well, you, you can see how long the video is. That There is more to talk about. So gather around, everyone, for another trip into some Call of Duty trivia and weirdness. Or don't. I, I can't make you watch this. You should probably watch the remaster before watching this, uh, but I can't make you watch that either, so y your call, I guess. Nintendo Call of Duty Games From 2006 to 2013, Activision made sure that Call of Duty was on every single console imaginable, except Call of Duty 3 on the PC for some reason. Don't know why they skipped out on that one. And so, in those seven years, there were 13 different Call of Duty games developed for the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo DS, and the Nintendo Wii U. For the Wii, there was Call of Duty 3, World at War, Modern Warfare Reflex Edition, Black Ops, and Modern Warfare 3. For the DS, there was Call of Duty 4, World at War, Modern Warfare Mobilized, Black Ops, and Modern Warfare 3 Defiance. And finally, for the Wii U, there was Black Ops 2 and Ghosts. Now, the Wii and Wii U versions of the games were mostly the same as their other console counterparts, just with lower quality graphics, less blood and gore, and of course, motion controls. For the Wii, that is. Also, no DLC. Except for the Freefall map for Ghosts, that was included in the game. Oh, and there wasn't any zombies in World at War, and Kino was the only zombies map in Black Ops. Meanwhile, the DS games are a completely different story. Each of these games feature their own storylines, multiplayer maps, levels, characters, and weapons. For example, in Call of Duty 4 DS, instead of playing as Soap and Paul Jackson, you play as Zack Parker and Snowman. In World at War DS, there are no shotguns in the multiplayer at all, and the game features three different campaigns, American, Soviets, and British. In Modern Warfare Mobilized, Zack Parker returns and goes after the villain Prince Farhad. There's also a survival mode that I talked about in the last COD Iceberg. In Black Ops DS, you have a very unique version of zombies that I'll talk about in its own entry in a little bit and you mainly play through the campaign as Yuri Razlov or Michael Shaw. Also, Alex Mason actually appears in this game, and is the only console character to ever appear in one of these Nintendo DS games. And finally, for Modern Warfare 3 Defiance, you primarily play as the SAS, the Nevada National Guard, and the Alaskan National Guard. The game also serves as a direct prequel to the main console game. After 2013, Activision stopped releasing Call of Duty games for Nintendo consoles. However, very recently, it was announced that this would change, and Call of Duty games would be returning to Nintendo consoles. Even more crossover characters. So last time I went over a bunch of characters from multiple pieces of media who have made guest appearances in Call of Duty games. And since then, a bunch more have been added. Most famously, Godzilla and King Kong from the MonsterVerse were central characters in Season 3 of Vanguard's multiplayer. There were even skins based on the two titans and Mechagodzilla. The rapper Snoop Dogg has appeared in various different Call of Duty games. First in Ghosts as a voice pack, and most recently as a fully playable character in Vanguard's second season, and Call of Duty Mobile's 2022 third season. The T-800 and T-1000 Terminators from the Terminator franchise were added into Vanguard during its fourth season. The Armored Titan from Attack on Titan was also added into Vanguard as a skin for Roland. This happened literally right after I uploaded the first Call of Duty Iceberg. YouTubers iFerg, Bobby Plays, and Hawk's Nest were all made playable characters in Call of Duty Mobile during its 2021 11th season. Major Matoko, Batu, and Togasa from the Ghost in the Shell series were added into Call of Duty Mobile during its 2022 7th season. 
During Vanguard's final season, the characters Cha-Cha and Hazel from the show and comic Umbrella Academy were added into the game as skins for operators. Football players Paul Pogba, Neymar Jr., and Messi were made playable characters in Modern Warfare 2's first season and in Mobile's 2022 10th season. The basketball player Kevin Durant was added into Modern Warfare 2 as an operator during its third season. Streamers Tim the Tatman and Nick Merckx were added to Modern Warfare 2 as operators during its third season. On May 10th, 2023, a free Crash Bandicoot bundle was given out to the Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 store. It wasn't in a new skin or anything, it was just a collection of stickers and weapon charms featuring characters from the Crash Bandicoot franchise, but I thought I'd mention it here. And finally, Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series was added into Modern Warfare 2 during its second season. Also, while not a crossover with another franchise, Raul Menendez from Black Ops 2, Seraph from Black Ops 3 and 4, Rourke from Ghosts, and Al-Assad from the rebooted Modern Warfare series were added into Vanguard during its fifth season. Although technically this is the clone of Menendez from Black Ops 4 because of the eye patch, but I don't think anyone cares. Oh, and in Modern Warfare 2, there was a skin released for Gus that makes him look like Ethan from Infinite Warfare. Call of Duty Strike Team Developed by the Blast Furnace and released in September 2013 for iOS devices in October 2013 for the Google Play Store, Call of Duty Strike Team is the first real attempt at bringing the Call of Duty experience to smartphones. It's a first-person shooter that takes place in 2020, and is a kind of prequel to Black Ops 2? It is canon to the Black Ops continuity, or was, I'll get into that in a second. In the game, you play as four different members of JSOC, Marshall, Reed, Chavez, and DeMarco, as they do missions in the Arctic, Afghanistan, and Hong Kong, battling alongside the Spetsnaz and Afghan National Army against the Mercs from Black Ops 2. As for the game's story, there's not really a ton there. It's just you going on missions, and sometimes you'll get a cutscene about how Chorus Dia is expanding, or how President-elect Bosworth is doing some, like, epic stuff or whatever. But hey, Menendez makes a cameo at the end, so that's cool, I guess. Is it done? Yes, they engaged as you predicted. They believe it was destroyed along with the building. Good. We move to the next phase. They've stoked the fire. Soon they will feel the flames. Gameplay-wise, Strike Team is normally a first-person shooter. However, you can control a drone and command your squad that way, almost like the Strike Force missions from Black Ops 2. This was the main gimmick of the game. As for the weapons, Strike Team featured three different weapons for each class, minus the pistol class. And all of these weapons are from Black Ops 2, except the KS-23. Yeah, the Black Ops 1 campaign-exclusive shotgun, it's here for some reason. You can use these weapons not only in the game's campaign, but in Strike Ops. This is a collection of smaller modes, like Time Attack, Domination, and Survival. And before you ask, no, there's no multiplayer. You were playing all of these modes against bots. The game received positive reviews, but was eventually taken off of all stores, meaning that the only way to play it nowadays is through emulators. iOS Zombie Games There's been three different Call of Duty Zombie games released for smartphones. The first being Call of Duty Zombies, released in November 2009. This game featured all four original World at War zombie maps, along with a new tutorial level where Richtofen dies and becomes a zombie. Obviously non-canon, but it'd be crazy if Richtofen became a zombie, right? Anyways, these are all basically just ports of the maps, with very minor changes, like how you can't jump. Also, Shidonuma has the Peter's Grave Easter Egg, which I talked about in the last iceberg. Originally, this app only had Nocturne and Toten. Verruckt would be added in February 2010, and Shinonuma in June of the same year. 
But a day after Shinonuma was added into the game, which by the way, you had to pay five bucks for each of these maps, a sequel to the game was released called Call of Duty World at War Zombies 2. It was literally the exact same game, except instead of Nocturne and Toten, it came with Shinonuma for free, and you had to pay for Verrux and Nocturne and Toten separately for five bucks. Then, in September 2010, Doris was added into the original game, and the sequel was taken off the App Store. All three DLC maps then became free, and no refunds were given to those who bought the DLCs. Sadly, this game would be removed off of the App Store in 2018, which means that the only way to play this game now is to use emulators. In December 2011, a true sequel was released, titled Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies. And like the name suggests, it's a port of Black Ops 1's Zombies mode. This game originally only came with Kino Der Toten and Dead Ops Arcade, although Ascension and Call of the Dead Director's Cut were added eventually. And yes, you heard me right, Call of the Dead Director's Cut. This may sound pretty cool, but it's actually not that interesting. It's just Call of the Dead, but instead of the celebrity cast you play as, you play as Ultimus, which means that, yes, you can't do the Easter egg in this. Another major difference between this and its console counterpart is that all dual-wield weapons are absent from the game, which means that only the single CZ-75 is usable, and Pack-a-Punched weapons that turn into dual-wielded weapons don't do that anymore. So the HS-10 turns into the Typhoid, the M1911 turns into the Mustang, and the PM-63 turns into the Tokyo. Sadly, this game was also taken off the App Store sometime in 2018, so again, you've got to use an emulator to play. Arsenal Easter Eggs In the Black Ops 4 map, Arsenal, there are a ton of Easter Eggs relating to previous Black Ops games. These easter eggs are all various models of drones and vehicles from the previous games. For example, the RCXD from Black Ops 1, the Dragonfire drone, the Claw drone, the AGR drone, and the FA-38 Lightning Strike jet from Black Ops 2, and the Counter UAV and Raps from Black Ops 3. You can also find a blueprint for Griffin Station, the moon base from the Zombies map, Moon. The Back in Black Pack. So Black Ops 3 is the only Call of Duty game to have six major DLC packs. Now you might be a little confused. You'll more than likely remember that there were four standard DLC packs and the Zombie Chronicles for Black Ops 3. What was the sixth DLC? Well, that would be the Back in Black pack. This was a DLC released on June 11th, 2018 that featured Firing Range, Jungle, and Summit from Black Ops 1, and Slums from Black Ops 2. All remastered. Now, you're probably even more confused. How come you haven't heard of this DLC pack? Well, it's probably because it was given out exclusively to people who pre-ordered Black Ops 4 for the PS4 via the PlayStation Store. And of course, you had to have Black Ops 3 on the PS4 in order to download the pack. So basically, an extremely small amount of people got this pack. And to this day, none of these maps have ever been released to PC or Xbox. Technically. You see, these maps were basically identical to the Black Ops 4 versions of these maps. So don't worry, you can actually play all of these remastered maps just in a different game. Although you can't actually use the Black Ops 3 weapons, abilities, killstreaks, and movement system on these maps, so the Black Ops 3 versions are still pretty unique. Scrapped weapons. So I mentioned a ton of scrapped weapons in the previous video, but I forgot a few and somehow forgot to include Black Ops 3. I said in that video that there were no deleted weapons. That, that's just very wrong, so allow me to right my wrong. In Call of Duty 2, the Panzerfaust 60 and the FG-42 were scrapped. In Call of Duty 4, the Mosin Naget and the PPSH-41 were scrapped. In Modern Warfare 2, the MP5, AW-50, G-36C, and the STG-44 were all scrapped. 
in Modern Warfare 3, the AT-4, Vector, M1014, PP-2000, and the AUG H-Bar were scrapped. In Black Ops 2, the M4A1, Type 95, and the Strela 3 were scrapped. In Advanced Warfare, the Exo Minigun, FAD, RSAS, M9 Beretta, and the MP7 were scrapped. In Black Ops 3, the Hammer, MP7, M27, the Remington 870 MCS, the SWAT 556, the Chaser, Type 25, MCAS, Patriot, FAL OSW, and Robot Gun were all scrapped. In Infinite Warfare, the ARACC and the Niagara were scrapped. In Black Ops 4, the HVK-30, Brecci, FFAR, SVG-100, and the KRM-262 were scrapped. In Vanguard, the River Rolls was scrapped. And finally, in Call of Duty Mobile, the 48 Dredge, Moors, and the Tracker Rifle were scrapped. Scrapped Multiplayer Maps Just like with the last entry, I mentioned a ton of scrapped multiplayer maps in the last video. However, I didn't list them all. So here's most of the other ones I didn't mention. In Call of Duty 2, Fire Station, Train Yard, Sand Pit, Desert Bunker, Train Wrecker, River Crossing, Solinge, Minsk, and Care For were scrapped. In Call of Duty 4, Overgrown Knight, Favela, District Knight, Ambush Knight, Strike Knight were all scrapped. In World at War, Encampment, Struggle, Lagoon, Casino, Subway, and Trenches were scrapped. In Modern Warfare 2, Arcadia, Riverwalk, White House, Plaza, Crib Basement, Mall, and a Substation were scrapped. In Black Ops 1, Munich, Uranium, Snowmine, Pentagon, Rooftops, Sandstorm, Airbase, and a Shipyard were scrapped. In Modern Warfare 3, Brooklyn, Warlord, and Meteora were scrapped. In Black Ops 2, Cruise was scrapped. This was probably turned into Hijacked. In Black Ops 3, Bypass, Freighter, Zoo, Confinement, Exile, Training, and Satosa were all scrapped. In Black Ops 4, Urban, Iceberg, wait a second, Museum, Valencia, Shipbreakers, and Glacier Dam were all scrapped. There was also an unnamed map that took place at an airport in a desert that was also scrapped. And there were two cancelled Chaos Zombie maps that were codenamed Morocco and Russia. These were obviously scrapped too. In Modern Warfare 2019, Boneyard, Trade, Ravine, Oasis, Bombsite, Invasion, Fallout, Hook, Theater, Townhouse, Discharge, Vanguard, and Millbase were all scrapped. Finally, in Call of Duty Mobile, the original shipment was scrapped. Scrapped Equipment For some reason, I didn't go over any scrapped equipment in the last video, so uh, I I'll do that now. In Call of Duty 4, Thermite and the Sticky Bomb were scrapped. In World at War, Potatoes, Thermite, and the PMD-6 were all scrapped. In Modern Warfare 2, the Power Drill was scrapped. In Black Ops 1, the Satchel Charge, Flare, Acoustic Sensor, and the N74ST were all scrapped. In Call of Duty Ghosts, the Tactical Insertion was scrapped. Although you could actually still use it in the Infected game mode. In Advanced Warfare, the Throwing Knife Exo Launcher and Explosive Bullets were scrapped. In Black Ops 3, the Molotov Cocktail, Bubble Shield, Boomerang, and the Speed Burst were all scrapped. In Infinite Warfare, the Bouncing Betty, Attack Drone, Black Hat, IED, Portal Generator, Mortar Mount, and Barrier were all scrapped. In Black Ops 4, the Semtex, Mini Turret, Camera Spike, DOT Grenade, Foam Grenade, Mini Wraps, Nightingale, Decoy, Armblade, and Boomerang were all scrapped. 
In Modern Warfare 2019, the flashlight, EMP grenade, and the pop rocket were all scrapped. And finally, in Black Ops Cold War, the razor wire was scrapped. Scrapped killstreaks. I mentioned a bunch in the last video, but I forgot to mention a few of them, so uh, here's, the, here's the few I, I didn't mention. In Modern Warfare 2, the Super Airstrike, Thumper, yeah, the Thumper is going to be a kill streak, Advanced UAV, Tank, Little Bird, and Auto Grenade Launcher were all scrapped. In Black Ops 1, the AA Gun, Artillery, and the MP40 were all scrapped. Uh, yeah, the MP40 was going to be a kill streak. Although, I take that back, it was, it was more than likely just a test kill streak. In Black Ops 2, the Chopper Gunner was scrapped. In Call of Duty Ghosts, the Recon Marker, Sentinel, Scout Drone, and Salvo Drone were scrapped. In Advanced Warfare, Super Exosuit and the Local Security Network Threat Detection System were scrapped. In Black Ops 3, the Hunter Killer, Dragonfire, War Machine, Death Machine, Lodestar, K9 Unit, Swarm, and Escort Drone were all scrapped. In World War II, the Advanced Recon Aircraft was scrapped. In Black Ops 4, the Talon, Wraith, and Power Core were scrapped. Scrapped Game Modes For some reason, I didn't go over scrapped game modes, except for like a few individual ones, like uh, Black Ops 2's Hacker Mode in the last video, so uh, here's, here's all the scrapped game modes, or at least most of them. In Call of Duty 4, Acquisition, Capture the Flag, and Tag were scrapped. In Modern Warfare 2, Die Hard, VIP, One Flag Capture the Flag, Defcon, and Arena were scrapped. In Black Ops 1, War from World at War was scrapped. In Modern Warfare 3, Grinder was scrapped. In Black Ops 2, Purgatory, Team Defender, and Hunted were scrapped. In Call of Duty Ghosts, Headquarters, Capture the Flag, Sabotage, Demolition, and Team Defender were scrapped. In Advanced Warfare, KOTM, ATDM, and Boot were scrapped. In Black Ops 3, Old School, Sudden Death, Resistance, and Purgatory were scrapped. In Infinite Warfare, Blitz, Sabotage, Team Defender, One in the Chamber, Mugger, Juggernaut, Team Juggernaut, and Siege were cut. In World War II, Lockdown, Control, and Sticks and Stones was scrapped. In Black Ops 4, Uplink, Frontline, Payload, Stronghold, Infiltration, War from uh, World War II, and Hostage were scrapped. In Modern Warfare 2019, Defcon, Combat Outpost, Multi-Team Musical Chairs, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know either. Prop Hunt, Mugger, Rush, High Value Target, and Hostage were all scrapped. Finally, in Vanguard, Gunfight and Infected were scrapped. Also, Cranked and Gun Game were planned for zombies in that game, but were both scrapped. World at War Final Fronts Developed by Rebellion Developments, Call of Duty World at War Final Fronts is a spin-off game released in November 2008 exclusively for the PlayStation 2. At first glance, this game may just seem like a port of World at War. But the truth is, Final Fronts is a completely different game with completely new levels and storylines. For example, there is no Soviet campaign at all. Instead, the game features three campaigns. Americans in the Pacific, Americans in Europe, and the British in Europe. However, despite this, the game does feature some returning characters from World at War. For example, Roebuck and Polanski appear in various Pacific levels, although C. Miller and Sullivan are nowhere to be seen. Although you do get to play as Joe Miller, so uh, I guess that's C. Miller's brother or something. Also, Polanski got a promotion, and now he's a corporal. The game also features a lot less weapons than World at War, and feels like more of an older Call of Duty game, like Call of Duty 1 or 2. In fact, one could argue that Final Fronts is the last Call of Duty game in the original series. As for features outside of the campaign, 
which had 13 levels, there's none. Not surprisingly, there's no zombies, but surprisingly, there's no multiplayer option at all. Which is odd, because both Finest Hour and Big Red One, Call of Duty games that were also released on the PS2, featured multiplayer. Now, some may wonder why Final Fronts was even made, as Call of Duty 3, 4, and World at War were all released for the Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, and the PS3. And it's actually pretty simple. The PlayStation 2 is the highest selling console of all time, with 155 million consoles sold. So people were still playing the PlayStation 2 in 2008. So Activision simply wanted to have a Call of Duty game on every major console. Now as for the game's reception, it was very negative, with critics and players alike criticizing the game for having extremely poor AI and clunky controls. World at War DLC 4 Originally, World at War was going to have four DLC packs, the first Call of Duty to do so. However, the fourth DLC pack was cancelled as it would release too close to Modern Warfare 2's release, and Activision didn't want to divide their player base. Although it was just a DLC pack, I don't think there'd be like people out there who would not buy Modern Warfare 2 because World at War got like three new maps and a new zombies map. We know for a fact that Kino Der Toden was going to be included in this pack, but as for the multiplayer maps, nobody knows. There's been some theories and kinda leaks that suggest that perhaps this would have been a Zombies exclusive DLC, with the other three maps being extremely early and very different versions of what would end up being Call of the Dead, Moon, and Ascension. Moon being Paris, that is. One thing's for sure, though. This DLC pack didn't happen. Black Ops Declassified Released in November 2012 for the PlayStation Vita and developed by Nihilistic Software, Black Ops Declassified was Call of Duty's only attempt at a Vita game. That is, if you don't count Roads to Victory, a PSP Call of Duty game that got a Vita port exclusively released digitally. Anyways, as for Declassified, people did not like it. Uh, but let's back up a bit. Black Ops Declassified serves as a spin-off to Black Ops, though it does connect pretty heavily with the 1980s missions in Black Ops 2. Taking place in the mid to late 1970s, you play as Alex Mason and Frank Woods as they go on various missions that are designed like their Modern Warfare Spec Ops levels. You travel to Vietnam, Afghanistan, Russia, Germany, etc. as you do your classic Call of Duty stuff. Shoot people and blow stuff up. Yeah, plot-wise, there's not really anything that important to the Black Ops series outside of the last level, where you play as an unnamed CIA agent who assassinates Menendez's dad. You even get to see a young Raul Menendez in this level. Although there is one level in the game where you play as Woods, who's investigating a dude named Adolf Schutzel, who's trying to resurrect Project Nova. You even travel to Mount Yamata. So I guess this is important, although it's never mentioned anywhere else in the series. Anyways, gameplay-wise, Declassified plays like a Modern Warfare Spec Ops mission, except the enemies deal a lot of damage, and the enemy AI is very inconsistent. Also, because these levels play like Spec Ops levels, there's no checkpoints. So if you die at the end of a level, you gotta do the whole thing over again. Outside the campaign, there's three other game modes. There's Hostiles, which is basically a watered-down version of Modern Warfare 3's survival mode, Time Trials, which are like the levels SSDD and FNG from the Modern Warfare series, shoot targets as fast as possible, and then there's the multiplayer, which is basically just a store brand version of Black Ops 1's multiplayer. Weapon-wise, you got a decent chunk of Black Ops 1's weapons, like the Commando, Crossbow, CZ-75, China Lake, etc. Although there are some interesting inclusions. For example, the Striker and PP-90M1 from Modern Warfare 3 are both in this game, as is the 357 Magnum from World at War. Map-wise, the game has a variety of different remakes and remixes of older Call of Duty maps. There's only six in the game. Shattered, which is, I think, the only completely original map. The COD wiki says it's based on Cracked from Black Ops 1, but I don't really see it. Container, which is just a remake of Shipment. 
range, which is a weird cousin of firing range, Intel, which is kind of like Grid from Black Ops 1, Rocket, which is a kind of remake of Dome from Modern Warfare 3, and the iconic Nuke House. Yeah, they took Nuketown and cut it in half, so you could only play on the Yellow House side. Lastly, I want to mention how this game actually has some fairly unique enemy factions. For example, you fight against the Stasi in one level in the campaign, and in one map in Hostiles. They're the East Germany secret police, and until Call of Duty Cold War, this was their only appearance in the series. And then, for some reason, the Contras, a real-world terrorist group funded and backed by the US government, were in the game in exclusively two multiplayer maps. Now, back to its reception. Yeah, critics and players alike hated this game. It was extremely buggy, the AI was bad, the campaign's story was basically non-existent, and the campaign's gameplay was annoying and short. You could literally beat the game in under an hour. Some have even called this game one of the worst games of all time. And I think that's a huge overreaction. I've actually played Declassified quite a bit back in the day. It's not good, don't get me wrong, but it's mindless fun. At least the multiplayer was. I think there are still lobbies to this day, which just goes to show you that this game has a cult following. The Black Ops timeline is broken. So before the release of Black Ops Cold War, the timeline for the Black Ops series was pretty simple. World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops Declassified, Strike Team, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 4, and Black Ops 3. However, with the release of Cold War, it became complicated because of the inclusion of Modern Warfare reboot characters in the campaign. At first, I thought that this just meant that some Modern Warfare characters existed in both the Modern Warfare timeline and the Black Ops timeline. But no, it's been confirmed that the new Modern Warfare games, alongside Vanguard and World War II, are canon. Now, Vanguard and World War II being canon is fine, that doesn't really change anything. But now that Modern Warfare is canon, how can Black Ops 2 be canon? Because Modern Warfare 2019 takes place in 2019, with its Warzone storyline taking place in 2020. And Modern Warfare 2 takes place in 2022, with its Warzone slash Raid storyline taking place in 2023. So in the Call of Duty universe, how do they go from modern day technology to floating mega cities, invisibility suits, Spider-Man gloves, mini tank drones, jetpack like gliders, orbital kinetic strike weapons, jet VTOLs, helicopter drones, and weird spider drones with taser weapons in just two years? Now the easy answer is, just don't think about it. But I think the actual answer is that starting with Modern Warfare 2019, all Call of Duty games going forward will be the set canon. So right now, the timeline looks like World at War, World War II, Vanguard, Black Ops 1, Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare 2019, and Modern Warfare 2. Of course, this could all be proven completely wrong if the next Treyarch game is a direct sequel to Black Ops 2, like a lot of the leaks are saying. But as of right now, I think there's two different Black Ops timelines. Blackout Origins The Blackout map from Black Ops 4 is made up of a bunch of different multiplayer maps, zombie maps, and in some cases even campaign levels from previous Black Ops games. Here's most of the references found in the map. The section of the map called Array is heavily inspired by the Black Ops 1 map of the same name. The Asylum area is literally just the entire World at War Zombies map, Verrucked, along with a small hedge maze and gazebo that's referencing the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Buried. The area Firing Range is heavily inspired by the Black Ops 1 multiplayer map of the same name. The boxing arena from the Black Ops 3 Zombies map, Shadows of Evil, is in the Rivertown area. The area Cargo Docks is heavily inspired by the Black Ops 2 map, Cargo. The area Nuketown Island is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 1 map, Nuketown. 
The diner and the building and shed next to it from the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Transit, appear on the map. The area hijacked is literally just the entirety of the Black Ops 2 map, hijacked. The blast doors that can be opened and closed from the Black Ops 1 map, Radiation, are featured in the Fracking Tower area. The Lighthouse area is heavily influenced by the Lighthouse from the Black Ops 1 Zombies map, Call of the Dead. The Turbine area is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 2 multiplayer map, Turbine. The Barn from the Black Ops 3 map, Fringe, is located in Rivertown. The Ghost Town area is a combination between a majority of the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Buried, and the entirety of the Black Ops 3 multiplayer map, Outlaw, which was a remake of the Black Ops 2 multiplayer map, Standoff. The area estates features the entirety of the Black Ops 2 map, Raid, and the mansion from the Black Ops 3 map, Stronghold. The area Hydro Dam is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 2 map, Hydro. The train from the Black Ops 2 map, Express, is located in the train station area. And finally, the area from the Black Ops 1 level Payback, where you and Wood steal an enemy helicopter, is in the map for some reason. Oh, and of course, the entirety of the Alcatraz map is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Mob of the Dead, and the Black Ops 4 Zombies map, Blood of the Dead. There's also the Shipwreck from the Black Ops 4 map, Contraband. Warzone Origins While Blackout was mostly made up of pieces from Black Ops multiplayer and zombie maps, Warzone's maps are different in that they're mostly original, with some classic maps sprinkled in. For example, in the original Verdansk, you could find the entirety of the Modern Warfare 2 map, Scrapyard, in the Boneyard area. In the port of Verdansk, you could find the entirety of the Call of Duty 4 map, Vacant. In the TV station area, you could find the entirety of the Call of Duty 4 map, Broadcast. The Prison Complex area is heavily influenced by the Modern Warfare 2 campaign level, the Gulag. And finally, near the Military Base area, you can find a recreation of the Call of Duty 4 map, Kill House. Next, in Verdansk 84, some more maps were referenced or flat out just placed in the Battle Royale map. In the Farmland area, you could find the Black Ops 2 map, Standoff. North of the Tavorsk district, you could find the Call of Duty 4 map Shipment, or at least a recreation of it. And the Summit area is a combination between the Black Ops campaign level, WMD, and the Black Ops 1 map, Summit. The Warzone map, Rebirth Island, is a direct reference to the Black Ops 1 level, Rebirth, taking place on the same island. However, design-wise, this map is nearly identical to the Blackout Alcatraz map. In Caldera, in the docks area, you can find a recreation of the Call of Duty 4 map, Shipment. In the Beachhead area, you could find a majority of the World at War map, Macon. In the Fields area, you could find a majority of the Modern Warfare 2019 map, Livestock. In the Runway area, you could find the famous World at War Bunker, which was featured in the World at War level, Hard Landing, and the multiplayer map, Airfield, along with it being the location of the World at War Zombies map, Nocturne Toten. And finally, Storage Town from Verdansk was added into Caldera in Season 4. And uh, as far as I know, Fortune's Keep is 100% original. But that's not all for Warzone as the Gulag changed throughout Warzone's lifespan. In Warzone's lifespan, the Gulag was changed around to reference Black Ops 1's Nuketown, Black Ops 2's Standoff, Black Ops 2's Rush, Black Ops 2's Hijacked, and Modern Warfare 2's campaign level, the Gulag. Warzone 2 Origins Warzone 2 is similar to the original in that it features various locations from previous Call of Duty games in its maps. In Al Mazra, in Tarak Village, you could find the Call of Duty 1 map, Newville. In Akhdar Village, you could find the Call of Duty 4 map, Showdown. In Al Mazra City, you could find the Modern Warfare 2 map, High Rise. 
In the airport area, you could find the Modern Warfare 2 map, Terminal. In the cave complex area, you could find the Modern Warfare 2 map, Afghan. In the quarry area, you could find the Modern Warfare 2 map, Quarry. In the Hafid port area, you could find the connected warehouses from the Call of Duty 4 map, Pipeline. In the Zaya Observatory area, you could find the Modern Warfare 3 map, Dome. Near Tarak Village, you could find the Modern Warfare 2 map, Rust. In the Hafid port area, you could find a recreation of the Call of Duty 4 map, Shipment. And finally, you could find the main warehouse from the Modern Warfare 2 map, Storm. As for Ashika Island, you could find a recreation of the Call of Duty 4 map, Shipment. Call of Duty Heroes Released in November 2014, Call of Duty Heroes is a real-time strategy game that takes heavy influence from the video game Clash of Clans. In this game, you create your own military base and take on enemy bases in the game's campaign, or against other players' bases. In order to attack these bases, you would need to train a variety of different soldiers, vehicles, drones, and heroes from various Call of Duty games. In order to do this, you would need to farm oil, gold, diamonds, and solarium. As for the units that you could train, you had your standard soldier, juggernauts, FTL soldiers, claw drones, AGR drones, paratroopers, pause robots, goliath mechs, quad tanks, and even a zombie drop pod that drops its zombie reinforcements. As for the heroes, each hero had their own unique skills and usually came with a kill streak they could use. And by they, I mean you. The heroes included were Captain Price, Ghost, and Soap from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, Walcroft of all characters from COD 4 and Modern Warfare 3, Yuri from Modern Warfare 3, Harper from Black Ops 2, Elona from Advanced Warfare, Riley from Ghosts, Outrider from Black Ops 3, Daniels from World War II, Ethan from Infinite Warfare, Gideon from Advanced Warfare, Reaper from Black Ops 3, Camille Dennis from World War II for some reason, Primus Richtofen from Black Ops 2 and 3, and Menendez from Black Ops 2. Uh, not much of a hero there. Sadly for Heroes fans, this game wasn't meant to last forever. As in December 2018, the game was shut down permanently. Live Action Trailers Starting in 2010 and seemingly ending in 2016, Call of Duty has released a variety of different live-action comedic trailers for their games. For Black Ops 1, there was There's a Soldier in All of Us, which features both Kobe Bryant and Jimmy Kimmel. Then there was Zombie Labs, which I talked about in the last iceberg. Then, in 2011, there was The Vet and the Noob, which starred Sam Worthington and Jonah Hill. In 2012, there was Surprise, which featured FBS Russia, I Justine, Omar Sy, and Robert Downey Jr. In 2013, there was Epic Night Out, which featured Megan Fox. In 2014, there was Codnapped, which featured Stephen Graham. In 2014, there was also Discover Your Power, which featured Taylor Kitsch. In 2015, there was Randall Higgins, Kill Cameraman, which featured Rob Hubel. Also in 2015, there was Seize Glory, which featured Michael B. Jordan, Marshawn Lynch, and Cara Delevingne. And finally, in 2016, there was Screw It, Let's Go to Space, featuring Michael Phelps and Danny McBride. Oh, and of course, there's the iconic The Replacer trailers. These were trailers featuring Peter Stormer as a character called The Replacer. His whole thing was that he would replace you in your everyday life, while you play Call of Duty. There were three trailers made for Black Ops 2, one for Black Ops 3, and one for Black Ops 4. And in Black Ops 4, you could actually play as the Replacer in-game if you bought a bundle. The second and third Replacer commercials also featured JB Smoove, and he is just hysterical in these. Now, is my client guilty? Probably. But who cares? DS Zombies Call of Duty Black Ops for the Nintendo DS featured its own Zombies mode that is very different from any other Zombies mode in Call of Duty. For starters, there's no perks, like, at all. 
So you got that three hit down system. Except not really. Because the zombies in this mode kill you with one hit. They also got a ton of health. And uh, hellhounds even show up, so that's that's pretty fun. They got a lot of health too. There's also no pack a punch or mystery box. Well, there is a mystery box, but it's called the mystery locker. There's also a bunch of power ups. In fact, all of your standard power ups, minus the death machine, bonus points, and obviously zombie blood, are in this game. Though some power ups act a little differently. For example, if you shoot the power-ups, you actually collect them, so you don't have to, like, run into them. And Fire Sale makes all the prices cheaper, so not just the box, but the wall weapons and doors as well. Which is a very good thing, because the doors cost 5,000 points and 10,000 points. The wall weapons aren't cheap either. You want the M16 with the grenade launcher? You're gonna have to spend 7,500 points on it. The M14 is 1,800 points, while the other spawn room wall weapon, the M18-9159, is only 300 points. Screw the M14 versus Olympia gang argument. Which gang are you? M14 gang or M18-9159 gang? As for the other weapons featured in this mode, you got the PPS-43, the XM-22, M40, Makarov PM, SKS, AK-47, MAT-49, M10, and even the Mark-22 Mod-0. Although only when you're downed for some reason, you can't get it from the box or the wall. Oh right, and I probably should have mentioned this before, you don't spawn in with grenades. You can buy grenades, but you spawn in with throwing knives. As for the maps, they're all extremely close quarters, and there's only four of them. House, which is a really sad excuse for a house. Facility, which is the poor man's five, Temple, which predates Shanger La, and Overlook, which the COD wiki claims is a reference to The Shining. I don't know about that one. If you want to play this, go ahead. But I think the best way to play these maps is in Black Ops 3, because people have actually remade these maps pretty faithfully in Black Ops 3. If you got a copy of Black Ops 3 on Steam, you might as well give these fan-made ports a shot. Here's hoping somebody remakes all of these Cyborg Rising Call of Duty Online maps in Black Ops 3's engine. I, I would have expected somebody to do it, but nobody has, for some reason. Raygun Mark II and Blackout The Raygun Mark II is one of the most popular wonder weapons in Zombies. However, many people don't know that there's actually a secret variant of the Mark II in Blackout. Many don't even know that it's even in Blackout. Wonder weapons are already extremely rare in the mode, and the Mark II doesn't even spawn normally on the ground or in chests. Instead, the only way to get it is by doing an easter egg where you throw a combat axe into a dartboard in the saloon area in the buried section of Ghost Town. This will open up a cell with a question mark on the wall. Head over there and you'll now be able to grab the Mark II from the wall. 
Now this Mark II functions the exact same as the standard Mark II. However, it has a unique color scheme not found in any other place in the series. Instead of the classic red and green color scheme, the Blackout Mark II has a red and blue color scheme. None of the Alpha Omega Mark II variants even have this color scheme. They all got their own. And to top it all off, this Mark II is held with only one hand, instead of two like every other time it's appeared. Death Streaks in Advanced Warfare Originally, the Death Streak mechanic from Modern Warfare 2 and 3 was going to return in Advanced Warfare, but thankfully it was scrapped. Sadly, we don't know every single Death Streak that was going to be in the game, but it can be assumed that a lot of them were going to be ones returning from the Modern Warfare games. For example, we know that Juiced was going to return, so others were probably going to come back as well. The only other death streak we know about was simply called UAV, which, as the name suggests, was going to give the player a UAV when they died. Black Ops 3 Last Gen DLC Now, Black Ops 3 on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 is a pretty big meme in the Call of Duty fanbase. For those that don't know, Activision released Black Ops 3 on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, along with the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. These two previous-gen versions of the game were pretty bad. They weren't unplayable, but they were not good. For starters, the Campaign, Nightmares Mode, and Free Run Mode were all removed. So, it was just zombies and multiplayer, with terrible graphics. Seriously, it cannot be understated how horrible the graphics were in this game. Because of the state the game was released in, nobody expected this game to get post-launch support. But shockingly to pretty much everyone, Last Gen Black Ops 3 actually received two pieces of DLC. One of which being the Zombies map The Giant, and the second being the entire first DLC pack for Black Ops 3, Awakening. These DLCs weren't even released at the same time as the other consoles, with Awakening being released for the PlayStation 4 in February of 2016, and the Xbox One and PC in March 2016, while the PS3 version was released in April 2016, and the Xbox 360 version in May 2016, while The Giant was released for the PS3 in June 2016, and the Xbox 360 in July of 2016. There were some rumors that the second Black Ops 3 DLC pack, Eclipse, was going to eventually come to last-gen consoles as well, but this never ended up happening. Warzone Mobile Multiplayer In Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, you can actually play standard team deathmatch and domination, but like not on Verdansk or any of like the Battle Royale maps. Nope, there's an entire part of Warzone Mobile dedicated to standard 6v6 combat. This mode was made to allow players in both Warzone 2 and Warzone Mobile to grind out their weapon levels, camos, etc. As it's kind of hard to grind out these things in a Battle Royale mode. Maybe, I don't know, I don't, I don't play Warzone. So yeah, now Call of Duty Mobile isn't the only COD game on iOS devices with 6v6 multiplayer and a Battle Royale. Although, Warzone Mobile's multiplayer component is kind of limited. There's only three maps. Shoot House, and the Modern Warfare 2019 versions of Scrapyard and Broadcast. The original Vanguard. So before Call of Duty Vanguard was revealed, pretty much every single leak for the game was stating that Vanguard was going to follow an alternate history version of World War II, where the war continued after 1945. A really interesting idea in my opinion. However, when the game was released, it turned out that this wasn't true. At all. There were some alternate history elements, but they were more like Black Ops 1 style conspiracy stuff, like implying that Hitler was actually assassinated by the Axis powers who want to start over as the Fourth Reich, but like that was it, the war ended in 1945. Outside of some historical inaccuracies, there wasn't really any major alternate history stuff. However, everything else about these early leaks were true. The game did take place in World War II, and it was called Vanguard, and there were some alternate history elements. So, I got a theory. I think that Call of Duty Vanguard, at one point in development, was going to be an alternate history game. Outside of the initial leaks, there are actually some pieces of evidence left over in the final game. 
For example, most of the post-launch weapons in Vanguard are prototype weapons, weapons that may have been used if the war continued. There's also the existence of the Fourth Reich in the campaign, and the whole Hitler assassinated thing, so, you know, that's evidence. And finally, there's the Flame Knots in War Machine, which would be right at home in an alternate history World War II game. So, that's my theory. Vanguard was at one point meant to lean into the alternate history angle, but Activision or whoever had Sledgehammer get rid of most of it. Why? I don't know, it's Activision. These guys are now selling sounds in Call of Duty. These dudes don't make any sense. Breaking Bad RV On the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer map, Santa Senya Border Crossing, and by extension the Ground War and Invasion map, Santa Senya, you can find an RV that has duct tape on its door. While it may seem like a nothing little detail, it's actually a direct reference to the RV from Breaking Bad. Isolated Origins So Call of Duty Mobile has its own Battle Royale mode, different from Warzone, Blackout, and Warzone 2, called Isolated. And it has its own unique map that's filled with references to previous Call of Duty games. Here's most of them. Originally, Isolated had its own Nuketown Island, based on the original Nuketown map from Black Ops 1. It was removed from the game in the 2022 seventh season. In the Pipelines area, you can find the two main warehouses from the Call of Duty 4 map, Pipeline. The Standoff area is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 2 map, Standoff. Originally, Isolated had a diner area that was the entirety of the diner area featured in the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Transit, but it was eventually removed from the game. The Kill House area features the entire multiplayer map Kill House from Call of Duty 4. The Launch Base area is heavily influenced by the Black Ops 1 map, Launch. The Farm area is pretty much the entirety of the Farm area featured in the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Transit and by extension, the zombie survival map, Farm. The Countdown area is heavily influenced by the Call of Duty 4 map, Countdown. Originally, Isolated had a crash area that took heavy influence from the Call of Duty 4 map, Crash. However, it was eventually removed as well. The Overgrown area is pretty much the entirety of the Call of Duty 4 map, Overgrown. The Black Market area is heavily influenced by one of the safe houses from the Black Ops 3 campaign. The Bus Depot area is pretty much the entirety of the Bus Depot area from the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Transit, and by extension, the Zombies Survival map, Bus Depot. And finally, in the Docks area, you can find a modified version of the multiplayer map, Shipment from Call of Duty 4. As of right now, there's been 16 different variations of shipment over the years, not counting Call of Duty Mobile multiplayer ports. Please just come up with a new small map. Scrapped Vanguard Furry Skin Towards the end of Vanguard's lifespan, it was revealed that a skin titled The Loyal Samoyed was being added into the game as part of the Flu Fury Tracer Pack. However, it would never end up being in the game because it was stolen. You see, Activision stole from artist Salen, who uploaded this piece of art titled Semoy Medical in 2019 to ArtStation. And before somebody says, this was just a coincidence, Activision didn't steal anything. Activision has pretty much confirmed that they did steal it, stating, quote, We have the utmost respect for creativity and content creation. We love the loyal Samoyed. We erred in our process and have removed this imagery from the game. We apologize for the misstep. Valderis Museum So this is a pretty controversial multiplayer map in Modern Warfare 2. It's not controversial because of its layout or anything, but instead because of Activision being scummy as usual. You see, this map was supposed to be in Modern Warfare 2 at launch, and was even one of the few playable maps in the game's private and public betas. However, when the game released, this map was nowhere to be found. Activision have never explained why it was removed, though many players have speculated that it was removed because of potential legal issues, as this map is actually based on a real museum called the J. Paul Getty Museum in California. It was speculated that perhaps this museum didn't want to be represented in a violent first-person shooter. However, whatever issue there was had presumably been solved by February of 2023, 
as the Valderis Museum was added back into the game. But not in an update, like a little like bonus to players. No, it was advertised as a new map in Season 2, despite it being, you know, not a new map. An already extremely controversial season, as not only was a scrapped multiplayer map that was in the beta being advertised as a new map, but the other maps at the launch of the season were a remake of a multiplayer map that had already been remade in the last game, and the two Ground War Invasion maps were taken straight from Warzone 2, and even then, a decent chunk of these Ground War maps were remakes of previous maps. One of them being the remake that was released the very same season. And all of the new game modes weren't new, but instead previous modes from older games. And some of them, like Gun Game, Drop Zone, and Infected, should have been in the game at launch. Oh, and one of the weapons added in this season was from the campaign. Anyways, in Season 3, there was a gunfight and face-off map called Exhibit that was released. That was also based on the J. Paul Getty Museum. So, uh, yeah, any legal issue Activision had with the museum has to be resolved, if that was even the issue in the first place. What country does Call of Duty 4 take place in? So in Call of Duty 4, the levels The Coup, Charlie Don't Surf, The Bog, War Pig, Shock and Awe, and Aftermath all take place in a country in the Middle East. However, it's never mentioned directly in any of the games which country this is. For a long time, there were three main theories. Afghanistan, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. Some players believed it was Afghanistan because in Modern Warfare 2, you fought the Op 4 in two different levels in the game, and these levels take place in Afghanistan, and the Op 4 were the main enemies in the levels that I mentioned earlier. Then there's the Iraq theory. Some players believed that this country was Iraq because the war in Iraq in real life was still going on. So a game called Modern Warfare would obviously have to relate to that war in some way. And finally, some believed that the country was Saudi Arabia. This was the theory most people believed in, as the Op 4 logo and various Saudi Arabian flags feature very similar crossed swords. And a lot of these scrapped marine levels from COD 4 took place in Saudi Arabia. So that explains it. Call of Duty 4's unnamed Middle Eastern country is actually Saudi Arabia. Except it's not. Thanks to the various mission briefing cutscenes in the game, we actually know exactly which countries the levels take place in. And yes, I said countries. The Coup, Charlie Don't Surf, The Bog, and War Pig all take place in Saudi Arabia, while Shock and Awe and Aftermath all take place in Iraq. So yeah, it was Saudi Arabia and Iraq all along. The Original Cold War Zombies in the last iceberg, I talked about how Black Ops Cold War was originally just going to be called Call of Duty Cold War. But when Sledgehammer was taken off the game, Treyarch was thrown onto the project, and Black Ops elements were added into the game. This is why a lot of the returning Black Ops characters in the campaign didn't really do anything. Now because of this, it's very likely that Cold War's Zombies mode was going to actually be a sequel of sorts to World War II's Zombies mode instead of a sequel to the Aether storyline from World at War to Black Ops 4. Now this is all speculation, but it makes sense. Especially since a lot of the things introduced in World War II's Zombies mode were carried over and evolved into Cold War. Ronald Reagan so when Black Ops Cold War was revealed, the meme Ronald Reagan began spreading around online. Not sure why it did, but it did. Yeah, I don't think it's all that funny, but regardless of my stupid opinion, Treyarch seemed to really enjoy the meme, as they went on to put two different Ronald Reagan easter eggs in zombies. First, there's a chance a special zombie will spawn in one of the Outbreak maps, named Ronald Reagan, and will be sporting a mohawk. If you kill him, he'll drop a ray gun. This special Ronald Ray Gun zombie returns in the Zombies map Forsaken, where he has his own little Easter egg mission where you gotta deliver pizzas for him. By doing this quest, he'll reward you with some salvage. Usually. Sometimes it's a ray gun, but it's normally salvage. 
You can also kill him at any time, so uh, if you don't get a ray gun, just kill him. Los Almas. In the Modern Warfare 2 level, El Sin Nombre, you can find a map titled Los Almas. Now because of how detailed this map is, many players instantly jumped to this being an easter egg teaser of sorts to a new Warzone 2 map. And it looks like that's the plan. As very recently, it was leaked that this will be the next Warzone 2 map and it'll debut in Modern Warfare 3, which is apparently coming out this year. Not sure how I feel about Modern Warfare 3 coming out so soon, but whatever. So yeah, it's a pretty neat little easter egg teaser for the next Warzone map. Mobile's versions of Shinonuma and Nocturne Toten. Call of Duty Mobile has a very interesting relationship with zombies. Originally, the game was supposed to launch with zombies, but this never ended up happening, though I'll talk about that a little bit more later. A zombies mode was eventually added into the game around November 2019, with Shinonuma being the only map available. There were three different modes, Raid, Hardcore Raid, and Survival. Survival was your standard zombies mode, while Raid and Hardcore Raid were more like Call of Duty Online's zombies mode, where you survived until either round 8 or 12, then you had to fight a boss, and then the game ends. Now, for the most part, this version of Shinonuma had the same layout as all the other versions of Shinonuma released at the time, like World at War, Black Ops, and Black Ops 3. However, there was one major change. This version of Shinonuma had an underground lab area that was based on the Black Ops 3 map, Zetsubo no Shima. This was the first time any new area had ever been added to a classic zombies map. It was pretty cool, but I guess this mode wasn't super popular because they eventually removed zombies from the game only four months after its introduction, though this zombies mode would eventually return in October 2022. Now, Shinonuma wasn't originally going to be the only map in mobile. Nocturne Toten was actually completed, but never saw the light of day. The reason I'm mentioning this here, and not in the scrapped map entry in the video, is because Nocturne Toten was playable to the public early in 2020, though it wasn't supposed to be released. It was found in the game's files, and somehow made playable by downloading a separate app or something, I don't really know the process behind that. But when you got on there, you would find that this Nocturne Toten is extremely different than any other version of the map. For example, not only are there perk machines scattered around the map, but also the Pack-a-Punch. And there's a bunch of new areas. Predating Die Machine by almost a year, you could go into the other upstairs area of the bunker, and even go out into the backyard to fight zombies there. Also, the crashed World War II plane that's back there was replaced with a crashed Sea Knight helicopter that I'm pretty sure is taken directly from the map crash. Also, for some reason, I, I guess for enemy variety's sake, they added in the napalm zombies from Shangri-La, Hellhounds, and the denizens from Transit. The denizens even have a new ability. They can hop on zombies and make them stronger. Shinonuma also had some new enemies, like the Avogadros, Brutus, Napalm Zombies, and a new boss zombie called the Abomination. Also, both Shinonuma and Nocturne Toten had stories to them. Shinonuma even had a comic book style opening cutscene, and both maps featured various diary entries you could find scattered around the map. Stinger so for some reason, the Browning LMG wasn't in World War II's multiplayer. As a normal weapon, I, I know it's on the Sherman tanks. Or at least that's what a lot of people think. In actuality, the Browning is in the game's multiplayer as the Stinger. Now, at first glance, this looks like some kind of weird modified version of the Browning. And that's because it is. In 1943, Sergeant Mel Gribich and Private First Class John Little created the Stinger in order to make the M1919 Browning a more portable weapon. Mel would create six of these Stingers and hand them out to his fellow soldiers. These Stingers were built using the M1919 Browning as a base, and they had the bipod and rear sight taken from a bar and a stock taken from an M1 Grand. Just a little obscure history fact for you. 
I still wish the normal Browning was usable in multiplayer, especially since it's in the campaign, but the Stinger is a pretty cool little obscure weapon. Coffin Dance In the Cold War Zombies map Dime Machine, if you shoot at five different orbs in the Particle Accelerator room, you'll be teleported into the Dark Ether, where you'll be met with some zombies recreating the Coffin Dance meme with a loot box. You'll then be teleported back to the real world, and the crate can now be opened for a variety of rewards, including Juggernaug or a ray gun. Campaign Exclusive Weapons Not every weapon in a Call of Duty game is usable in the multiplayer. In the last iceberg, I went over some weapons that made cameo appearances in Call of Duty games, but aren't normally usable, like the RPG-7 in Ghosts, or the Cap 45 in Black Ops 3. So I'm not going to talk about any of these here, because I already talked about them, and most of them weren't even usable to begin with. So here's a list of all the campaign exclusive weapons that are usable in the Call of Duty series, starting with Call of Duty 4. Also, yes, a handful of these weapons were also in Zombies and or Spec Ops and or Warzone, but uh, whatever, I just, like, they're basically campaign exclusive. If you can't use them in multiplayer, they're here. In Call of Duty 4, there was the Javelin and the FIM-92 Stinger. In World Out War, there was only the Panzer Shrek. In Modern Warfare 2, there was the M1911, the W-1200, and the Dragonov. In Black Ops 1, there was the non-explosive crossbow, the DSHK, Panzer Shrek, MG42, Mosa Negat, PPSH41, Sten, KS23, Model 1887, STG44, MP40, Tokarev, and the Harpoon Launcher. In Modern Warfare 3, there was the M14 EBR, the DSHK, AK-74U, and the M9 Beretta. In Black Ops 2, there's a lot because Black Ops 2 had its own creative class system. This included the RPG-7, M16A1, FIM-92 Stinger, MP5, Spaz-12, Olympia, Spring Knife, Browning HP, Makarov, M1911, Uzi, DSHK, AK-74U, Galil, AK-47, Fal, Barrett 50 Cal, Dragonov, M60, Storm PSR, Minigun, The Manual Crossbow, RPD, MM1 Grenade Launcher, Titus 6, and the Valkyrie Launcher. In Call of Duty Ghosts, there was the APS Underwater Rifle and the MTAR X2. In Black Ops 3, there was the Spike Launcher, Death Machine, and Micro Missile Launcher. In Black Ops 4, there's no campaign. But there are blackout weapons that only appear in blackouts and zombies. These include the MP40, SX Model 07, and the Zweihander. In Modern Warfare 2019, there was the AK-12 and the MGL-32 grenade launcher. In Cold War, there was the tranquilizer gun, bow and arrow, and the M16A1. In Vanguard, there was the Lee Enfield and the M2 flamethrower. And finally, in the second Modern Warfare 2, there was the RGL-80. Alex is Roach. So here's a theory that I actually believe. The theory states that Alex, in the new rebooted Modern Warfare timeline, is this universe's Roach. With people saying that they'll eventually give him the nickname of Roach because he somehow survived the ending of Modern Warfare, like how cockroaches are hard to kill. Also, Alex probably needs a code name because I'm pretty sure this dude deserted the US military, and they don't normally like that. In Modern Warfare 2, it was confirmed that Alex's real name is Alex Keller, instead of Gary Sanderson. However, I still think this theory holds. Until Roach shows up in Modern Warfare 3 or a raid or something. Side note, Roach is in COD Mobile, and his introduction scene into the story is so dumb to me. Like, Price says the, what the hell kind of name is Roach line, and Soap and him look at each other like, ha, you said that to me before, that's a cool reference. Makarov is part of Perseus. So here's another theory that states that Makarov, from the rebooted Modern Warfare timeline, is actually a member of the faction Perseus, similar to how the original Makarov was part of the Four Horsemen and the Inner Circle. So why do people think this? 
Well, it's because in Modern Warfare 2's raids, you can find various Nova 6 barrels and Perseus flags in the bunkers you explore. And in Rebirth Island, not only does promotional art for the map show the Perseus symbol, but you can actually find the symbol on the map, confirming that the Perseus faction is still active in the Call of Duty timeline in the 2020s. And they're now making chemical weapons. You could even find a Perseus keycard on the map. And in the original Modern Warfare 3, Makarov releases a ton of chemical weapons all throughout Europe. So people are now speculating that Makarov is the current leader of Perseus and is creating chemical weapons that'll be used in the next game's campaign. And honestly, the more I think about it, the more I actually believe this theory. Fish AI. During the world premiere for Call of Duty Ghosts, Infinity Ward made a weird deal about Fish AI. They talked about how the fish, in one single level, will move out of the way like real fish. This was a really weird thing to, like, drive home, and the internet thought it was really funny. So the fish AI became a meme for a while. However, Mark Rubin, a former executive producer at Infinity Ward, claimed in 2013 that this whole thing was a joke. That Infinity Ward only brought up the fish AI because they thought it would be a funny joke. Nobody believes him, though. There was no way this was an intentional joke. Undead Siege Originally being released in August of 2021, Undead Siege is Call of Duty Mobile's big zombies mode. But it was removed in September 2021, but brought back in October 2021, but then removed again in November 2021, but then was brought back in December 2021, but was then removed from the game again in May 2022. Anyways, Undead Siege takes heavy influence from Cold War's Outbreak mode alongside Call of Duty Online's Seven Days of Siege mode. Basically, Undead Siege has you looking around for loot and weapons of all kind during the day, but when it turns the night, you gotta protect a base that's being attacked by zombies. But that's not all you can do, as there's a bunch of side quests like escorting a truck being driven by Tank Dempsey, a missed opportunity to have Tank driving a tank, but whatever, traveling around and inputting passwords into computers, feeding Cerberus some zombies, and destroying a giant Aether Crystal. There's also the Richtofen's reward system, where if you completed challenges, Richtofen would give you some rare camos, skins, and blueprints. And there's also a story, because that's just what Call of Duty Mobile needed, a spin-off story. The story takes place shortly after Primus Tank Dempsey's death. The rest of Primus is, understandably, a bit sad. So they decide to kidnap another Primus Tank Dempsey from another universe. This plan works, but they're attacked by zombies and trapped on the isolated Battle Royale map. And that's where you come in. Some random soldier gets teleported to where they are and recruited by Primus to help them defend their base against zombies. Also, Takio is here, and he uh, doesn't speak at all because his voice actor Tom Kane retired from voice acting due to a stroke in November of 2020, so Takio is just snoozing while the others fight. Jokes aside, it would have been really easy to recast Takio, but I'm really glad they didn't out of respect for Tom Kane. Anyways, Primus and Soldier Boy fight off a bunch of zombies, and then Richtofen finds out that somebody is keeping all five of them on the isolated island and it's never revealed who that is. I guess it's like the Shadow Man or something. I, I don't know, they don't, they don't explore it. Although, since this is a COD mobile story, it could be somebody completely random. Like, I don't know, maybe it's Paul Jackson. Yeah, you know what? Paul Jackson is mad that Richtofen didn't save him from the nuke, and so now he's using nuclear aether energy to keep them on the island. You may think that sounds stupid, but you can't prove me wrong. Get 
Davy Jones Locker. In Black Ops Cold War's Outbreak Mode, if you play on the map Armada and decide to swim to the bottom of the ocean, you'll eventually be met with a bunch of Dark Aether Fire, and just before you die, the location name will change to Davy Jones' Locker. Weird Melee Weapons In Black Ops 2, the idea of running around with just a knife in multiplayer was introduced into the series. For the next few games, they just kept the melee weapons to the Combat Knife, Riot Shield, and Exofist. This all changed, however, in Black Ops 3, when they began to add in a ton of melee weapons into the game. Some made sense, like the Carver, the Butterfly Knife, or even the Wrench, but some of them were a bit weird. For example, the Buzz Cut, a zombie apocalypse-looking weapon, the Nightbreaker, which looks like a weird Predator gauntlet, Nunchucks, Prize Fighters, which are just boxing gloves, L3FT.E, which is literally just a mannequin arm, and the Bushwhacker, which is a brass knuckle chainsaw. Weird, but pretty awesome. In Infinite Warfare, there was only really the Nunchucks that were weird. Then, in Modern Warfare Remastered, there was the Tribal Staff, Danger Close, which is literally just an RPG-7 rocket, that you carry around and beat people with, the Barber, which is just a shaving knife, and the Brawler's Brew, which is just a broken bottle. And then, in Black Ops 4, there was a lot of them. Sleigh Bell, which is a Christmas bell covered in barbed wire, Backhander, which was a severed zombie arm, Full Stop, which is a broken stop sign, Secret Santa, which is an ice climbing axe covered in wrapping paper, the Eye of Apophis, which I'm personally convinced is a scrapped Chaos Story Wonder Weapon, Cha-Ching, which is a bag of coins, and a Series 6 Outrider, an action figure of Outrider's superhero costume from the final season of Black Ops 4. Oh, and I guess if you bought the Attack on Titan bundle in Vanguard, you can use the Katana blueprint that makes it look like the swords from Attack on Titan. But instead of, like, dual-wield swords, it's just it one, so it's, like, what's the point? Dome versus Strike Zone versus Genesis. So Dome from Modern Warfare 3 is a fan-favorite map and has returned in Ghosts, Vanguard, Warzone 2, and Modern Warfare 2. Twice. However, some would argue it was also in Ghosts. Twice. And Infinite Warfare. Twice. This is because the Ghosts map, Strike Zone, and the Infinite Warfare map, Genesis, have extremely similar layouts to Dome. Now, they all play differently, but I mean, if you look at the layouts of the maps compared, they're all pretty similar. Personally, I think they're all different enough, but some people are convinced that Strike Zone, Genesis, and by extension, Genesis Holiday, are kind of remakes of Dome from Modern Warfare 3. By the way, just found this out, Genesis Holiday isn't playable in private matches or local play, so it's lost the time. Nobody can never play it again. Same with Shipmiss from Modern Warfare 2. Oh, I hate it. How I... How I absolutely hate it. The Lost Mobile Characters... Call of Duty Mobile features a ton of characters from throughout the Call of Duty series. From the original Modern Warfare games, the older Black Ops games, the newer Black Ops games, Ghosts, Zombies, Advanced Warfare, World War II, World at War, Vanguard, the Modern Warfare reboot series, and even Call of Duty Online. However, despite all of this, there's actually a lot of characters missing from the game that have been found to the game's files. Some of them were only there during the game's alpha and betas, but others were found well after the game was released. So here's a list of most of the characters that have been found in Mobile's files that haven't been released yet. Russman from Black Ops 2 and 4, Weaver from Black Ops 1 and Cold War, Sarah Hall from Black Ops 3, Bruce Harris from Black Ops 1, a Yemen soldier from the Black Ops 2 level, Achilles Veal, Mike Harper from Black Ops 2, Hudson from Black Ops 1, 2, 4, Declassified, and Cold War, an FBI LMG soldier from Black Ops 2, an FBI sniper from Black Ops 2, Sabre, the GIGN commander from the Modern Warfare 3 level, Bag and Drag, 
as is a Black Ops agent from the Black Ops 1 level Redemption, and Mestis from the Black Ops 1 level Numbers, who was also voiced by Sam Worthington, I had, I had no idea until now. Anaconda. In the Black Ops Cold War version of Jungle, you could find an anaconda chilling out on a tree just doing anaconda things. You can then kill it. Uh, please don't please do not do that though, anacondas are cool. Secret Weapon Name Changes In a few Call of Duty games, you can change the name of the weapon you're using without creating a blueprint of it. All you gotta do is just add some attachments. In Modern Warfare 2019, if you put the FSS Mini Attachment on the MP5, it'll change the name of the weapon to the MP5K, which makes sense, you're literally turning the MP5 into the MP5K. Surprisingly, this is the only weapon in the game that does something like this. Originally, if you put the 5.45x 39mm ammo on the AK-47, its name would change to the AKS-74U. However, this was only in the alpha and beta builds of the game. For whatever reason, this was removed from the final game. Finally, there's the MP5SD. While you can't get it in COD 4's multiplayer, there are a few levels in the campaign where an MP5 with a suppressor is called the MP5SD. Hudson's Five Different Voice Actors Normally, Call of Duty characters will only have one or maybe two voice actors throughout all their appearances. However, Hudson has five voice actors, one for each of his appearances. So yeah, in every single appearance he's ever made, he's voiced by somebody different. In Black Ops 1, he's voiced by Ed Harris. Why can't you remember? Reznov's dead, Mason. Do you hear me? He's dead! We was right. We're out of time. I know you. You're not a traitor. In Black Ops 2, he's voiced by Michael Keaton. Castro and the Russians are all over Angola. We can't go in. The CIA have buried the mission. Woods and his squad no longer exist. We got whatever you need, Mason. Name it. David can stay with Jenny. Like before. She loves having him. He'll be fine. In Black Ops Declassified, he's voiced by James Horan. Be cool. Nothing to be paranoid about now. Guy just wants to come in. Use your night vision to guide him through the tunnels without raising suspicion. Mason, check the body. Do you have anything? In Black Ops 4, he's voiced by Edward Bosco. No time for smoking and joking. Let's go. Jason Hudson, CIA. Nice. Thanks. And in Cold War, he's voiced by Peter Michael. General Haig. Allow me to introduce the man I suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Unique KF5. In advanced warfare, during the campaign, if you kill an Atlas juggernaut, they might drop a KF5. This KF5, at first glance, doesn't seem all that interesting. I mean, it looks a little different than the other KF5s, but I mean, it's not that crazy. Except it kind of is crazy, because this KF-5, which is only dropped by Atlas Juggernauts, not KVA Juggernauts, takes the appearance of the single-stack supply drop variants of the KF-5 found in the game's multiplayer. Except not really, because this weapon has stripes painted on it in various locations and lacks the range indicator on the side of the weapon, the single stack variant has. This unique variant of the weapon is found nowhere else in the game. You can't get it from other enemies, buy it in Exo Survival, buy it in Exo Zombies, or unlock it in multiplayer. Nothing. It's just a weird little oddity in the campaign. Alejandro X Valeria. So there's quite a few people out there who ship Alejandro and Valeria from the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, and it's kind of obvious why they do. They're rivals, and people love shipping rivals. But there are some people who believe that this ship was actually canon at one point. Some players have theorized that the reason why these two hate each other so much is because while they are working in the Mexican Special Forces, the two fell in love, and so, when Valeria betrayed Alejandro and sided with the cartel, he was heartbroken. It's a neat idea, I guess, 
but I think it's safe to say that Alejandro just hates her because she betrayed his team. There's not really anything indicating in the campaign that they were banging at one point. Mara in Modern Warfare 2 In June 2022, Alex Zedra, Mara's actress, posted a TikTok declaring that Mara was returning to Modern Warfare 2 and that she was happy to finally reveal it. She probably shouldn't have made this video though, because she potentially broke an NDA. You see, in the TikTok, Alex Zedra mentions getting the go-ahead to reveal that she's returning in the game. She got this go-ahead via a tweet. She says the tweet told her that, quote, You're on the team. Stay frosty. That's not, um... That's not what happened, though. Um... She... She saw a tweet like this one. It was an automated tweet. Now, the thing is, she was very likely part of the production of Modern Warfare 2 in some way. Because, in the video, she says that she's been given the go-ahead to reveal it. However, as of May 2023, Mara isn't in the game. Some people have claimed that they removed Mara from the game because she potentially broke NDA. But, I don't think that's how that works. I'm pretty sure that Mara will come to Modern Warfare 2 eventually, but it is weird that she hasn't returned yet. And I hope for Alexandra's sake, that she didn't break an NDA. Scrapped Vehicles We don't really know a ton of scrapped vehicles from Call of Duty games, especially after Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 was the last Call of Duty game that we know any scrapped vehicles from, so I'm going to list off all the scrapped vehicles that we know of. In Call of Duty 2, the Panther tank was supposed to show up. In Call of Duty 4, the AH-64 Apache helicopter was supposed to appear and be drivable. In World at War, the M8 Greyhound, Nashhorn, Spitfire, Shinyu, BF-109, Schwinnwagen, Stuart Light Tank, SDKFZ-222, the Wasp Universal Carrier, and the Type 1 Hokai were all scrapped. A good chunk of these were either supposed to appear in the British campaign or in the scrapped multiplayer game mode, Tank War. In Modern Warfare 2, a drivable motorcycle and the BM-21 were scrapped. There was also the L-Train, which was supposed to be an interactable vehicle in a map. In Black Ops 1, the Gaz-63 and the Maz-543 were both scrapped. In Modern Warfare 3, the BM-21 and the Harrier Jet were scrapped. And finally, in Black Ops 2, the Pavlo, Gaz-63, and the T-90 were all scrapped. Does Walcroft Die? So, Walcroft is a minor character in the original Modern Warfare series, being a background character in COD 4, and being a prominent character in the Modern Warfare 3 level, Mind the Gap. And unlike his friend, Corporal Griffin, he survives the events of the Modern Warfare series. Although, maybe he doesn't. The level Mind the Gap ends two different ways. The first is that the truck the SAS secures blows up off-screen while the second ending has the truck blow up in front of them. The latter only happens if you have the graphic content turned off, meaning that the Davis Family Vacation level doesn't happen. And in this ending, Walcroft is right next to the truck as it explodes, although he doesn't really seem that bothered by the explosion. Obviously, this is just a glitch. In-universe, he got thrown back like everyone else. But that leaves the question, did this explosion kill Walcroft? And I guess, by extension, Marcus Burns, the guy you play as in the level. I mean, it was a pretty big explosion, and he was right next to the truck. Well, it turns out that he actually lives, as you can very briefly hear him in the cutscene to the level Goalpost. So, he lives. Scrapped Zombies in Spaceland Easter Egg In the Infinite Warfare Zombies map, Zombies in Spaceland, there was a scrapped Easter Egg that players were able to find. Nobody actually knows how this easter egg would have been activated, but the result was that zombies would begin to spawn in with space helmets. It was only discovered by looking into the code of the game. Players have been able to force the easter egg to happen, however it is extremely buggy, as when you kill a zombie, the helmets just float in midair for a little bit before vanishing. 
It was later confirmed by an Infinity Ward developer that this was leftover assets from an easter egg they had intended to put into the game, but they had to put development on this easter egg on hold. And in order to make sure players didn't accidentally stumble upon this easter egg, they made it so that the only way you could activate this easter egg normally is by getting to round 6000, meaning that nobody could actually get it without modding the game. They did intend to go back and finish the easter egg before the game released, However, they never got around to it. Billie Eilish in Modern Warfare 2. Okay, no, Billie Eilish isn't actually in Modern Warfare 2. However, her music is... Kinda. In the Modern Warfare 2 level, Tradecraft, you can find a small band playing a cover of the Billie Eilish song, Bad Guy. I'd play you a clip, but I'm not taking any chances. There's a clip of it linked in the description below. Cancelled Raygun Replica. Originally, the plan was that if you pre-ordered the Black Ops 3 Collector's Edition, you were going to get a replica of the ray gun. However, Treyarch, or whoever was making the replica ray guns, couldn't get them done in time, so they replaced it with the Juggernaug mini-fridge. This was revealed in an interview with Chris Cowell in March 2023 as part of an article about the history of the ray gun. But hey, we're finally getting an official ray gun replica now, so that's pretty cool. If it was affordable. Original Modern Warfare 2019 Announcers In Modern Warfare 2019, there were originally unique announcers for each unit of the Coalition and the Allegiance. For example, if you played on the map Hackney Yard, you'd hear the SAS announcer and the Chimera announcer. The Coalition announcers were Sergeant Griggs for the Demon Dogs, General Lyons for Warcom, and the UK team announcer for the SAS. Meanwhile, the Allegiance had Kamarov for the Spetsnaz, keep forgetting they brought that dude back, the Jackal team leader for the Jackals, and the Chimera team leader for the Chimera. There were no unique announcers for Shadow Company, due to them not actually being canonically present in any of these fights. At some point, Infinity Ward removed both Griggs and Lyons, leaving the SAS announcer as the announcer for the entire Coalition. And they didn't remove any of the Allegiance announcers, it was just those two. The only reasons given as to why these two were removed from the game was because they apparently didn't match the tonal nature of the lines of dialogue. I don't get it either. Advanced Warfare 2 so many people speculated that Advanced Warfare would be receiving a sequel in 2017. Mainly because, while the campaign doesn't really end on a cliffhanger, Exo Zombies does, and they wouldn't tease a sequel if they didn't plan on making one. However, Advanced Warfare 2 was never announced or confirmed, and when World War II released, most people forgot about this potential game. This was despite Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry, Sledgehammer Games' founders, confirming in 2017 that Advanced Warfare 2 was planned at one point. It wouldn't be until April 2023 where Brett Robbins, a former creative director at Sledgehammer Games, confirmed that several prototypes and even a demo level of Advanced Warfare 2 were created. So why was Advanced Warfare 2 cancelled? It was apparently an executive decision to go back to the franchise's roots. That being World War II. Unreleased Alex Mason skins. Despite showing up in official marketing for Black Ops Cold War's sixth season, Alex Mason's Ultra Fireside and Deep Space skins never saw a release. They were fully completed, had bios and everything, but for whatever reason, Treyarch never released them. Some players are hopeful that Treyarch will add them into the game, but it's been almost two years since these skins were scrapped, and Treyarch is hard at work on their 2024 Call of Duty game. I'm sure it wouldn't take too much effort to add them into the game, but I just don't think they care. Konami Code Easter Eggs In Modern Warfare Remastered and Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered, if you go to the campaign menus, hold down both trigger buttons in your controller, and input the classic Konami code using your D-pad and buttons, up, up, down, down, X and Y on Xbox, and square and triangle on PlayStation. If you do this, every single level in both of these games will be unlocked. You'll also hear an audio line from Sergeant Griggs, who will say, yeah, I'm good to go. These Easter eggs were discovered years after their initial releases. 
Also, in the Black Ops 1 Zombies map, Shangri-La, if you input the Konami code in the spawn room in front of the stairs to Pack-a-Punch, every single zombie monkey that spawns into the map upon beginning the match will suddenly explode. Original Infinite Warfare box art. So the original box art for Infinite Warfare looked like this. This was actually the first image leaked for Infinite Warfare, and was the artwork they used in early marketing. However, at some point, it was decided to change the art to this. It's never been revealed as to why they changed the cover art, but many people speculate that this was an attempt to make the game look less sci-fi. This was because, while Infinite Warfare, at least its campaign, is looked at very positively nowadays, when this game was revealed, the Call of Duty community exploded, with fans in an outrage that a Call of Duty game was doing something different, and being a sci-fi game, myself included for some reason. Honestly, I think a lot of that was just mob mentality and peer pressure, but whatever. Paleo's Lighthouse Secrets The Modern Warfare 2 map, Paleo's Lighthouse, features two different references to other multiplayer maps in Call of Duty's history. The first one is very obvious, and it's the fact that for some reason, the main building is a tribute to the mansion from the OG Modern Warfare 2 map, Estate. There are some rooms that you can't go into, like the bathroom, but it's pretty much the exact same layout. Also, if you go into spectator mode, you can see a boat in the distance. Going up to that boat reveals that it's a reference to the Call of Duty 4 map wet work, as it's the same boat. Just kidding, it's Shipman again. I should also mention here that the name of the map is a direct reference to the pilot, Poleo, from Call of Duty 4. They also used her name of an ice cream shop in the Modern Warfare 2 map, Favela. How about bring back Favela instead of Shipman for the 10th time? Cade Janus. In February 2021, photographer Clayton Hagen sued Activision over copyright infringement. So what did Activision steal this time? The character, Cade Janus. Now you're probably wondering, who's that? She's an original character created by Clayton Hagen. He claimed that he had created the character as part of a story treatment to draw in interest from film production companies. So what evidence did he have that Activision stole her? Well, Cade Janus is portrayed by Alex Zedra, who plays Mara in Modern Warfare 2019 and Call of Duty Mobile. He claims that the costumes or skins that she wears in the game are directly based on photographs of Cade Janus. Also according to Hagen, Activision hired the same makeup artist for Mara that he hired for Cade. Now this lawsuit didn't end well for Hagen. Activision denied all accusations, and the courts say that even if they did use these photos, it's protected under the First Amendment. Albagra Fortress sign. On the Modern Warfare 2 map Albagra Fortress, you could find a sign with a bunch of tiny writing on it. If you zoom in, 
you'll see that this writing isn't just gibberish or anything like that, but instead a fourth wall breaking message from one of the game's texture artists. It reads, Here is some additional tidy information for the exhibition signage. Because there is simply not enough time to write paragraphs of unique facts in the way a real museum exhibits might, it is my hope that this text will eventually become illegible, unlike the previous signs in Modern Warfare, which many diligent people online took the time to translate and transcribe, much to my horror. In any case, I continue to appreciate all of the people who take a moment out of their day to read incidental signage such as this. It is meant to add a certain authenticity to the world. It always makes me and the rest of the team happy to see people appreciate the tiny details. So keep looking. You never know what you'll find. M240 in Modern Warfare 3 Despite showing up in a variety of different marketing material for Modern Warfare 3, the M240 light machine gun isn't usable in the game. It does, however, appear in the game. In both the brief flashback to No Russian in the level Blood Brothers, and in the hands of some juggernauts in the Spec Ops mission, Special Delivery. But yeah, it's not usable. It was going to be, but it was scrapped fairly late into development. So late, in fact, that it's still usable in the game. Okay, let me explain. In the PC, Xbox 360, and PS3 versions of Modern Warfare 3, the M240 isn't usable without modding or console commands or anything like that. However, in the Wii version of Modern Warfare 3, the M240 is usable, but not in multiplayer. It's found exclusively on the ground in the level goalpost. Big Crab If you go under the ocean outside of the map in the Black Ops 4 map Contraband, you can find a giant blue crab. It's the same model as the other crabs that you can find walking around on the map, but it is significantly larger. Sadly, it doesn't move around, it just sits there. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 In Tony Hawk's Underground 2, you can unlock a secret character called Cod Soldier. You can unlock this dude after completing the game's story mode on the sick difficulty. This guy is an American World War II soldier, and is an obvious reference to the Call of Duty series, as at the time, Call of Duty was exclusively a World War II series. Sadly, he's not based on any of the characters from the original Call of Duty. Instead, he's just a generic soldier. Ravenov Operator In early 2022, Ravenov from Cold War's Zombies Mode began appearing as a skin for bots in private matches and local play. This, combined with datamined audio, proved that like Weaver and Samantha Maxis, Ravenov was jumping from zombies to multiplayer as an operator during Cold War's scattered 2022 content drops. But in April 2022, after a patch was released, Ravenov stopped appearing as a skin for bots, and all mentions of him in the multiplayer were removed from the game's files in another patch in June 2022. So the Ravenov operator and bundle was scrapped. But why? I mean, they released Lazar as an operator in 2022, and that dude's canonically dead. Yeah, for those that don't know, it's been confirmed that Helen Park surviving is the canon ending of the game. Anyways, it's never been officially confirmed as to why the Ravenov bundle was scrapped, but it's been speculated that the Russian-Ukrainian war is the blame, because Ravenov is Russian. And I hate to say it, but that's probably the reason as a lot of game companies decided to remove a lot of Russian stuff from their games in response to the war. But keep in mind, this is just speculation. Jose Menendez in Cold War So eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that in my Black Ops timeline image I showed earlier in the video, Declassified wasn't in the new timeline, despite Cold War not retconning anything from it. So why did I remove it from the new timeline? Well, it's because Cold War actually does retcon Declassified, just not via the campaign. Instead, in the Cold War multiplayer map Cartel, you could find the body of Jose Menendez, Raul Menendez's father, inside of a house literally named the Menendez House. In Declassified, you kill Menendez's daddy, but in a completely different area. 
Now, you could argue that his soldiers just moved his body to his house, but I don't know, that seems kind of odd. Especially since this map cartel takes place on the exact same day as the declassified level, May 21st, 1982. And in that level, you play as a single CIA agent, while in the map, a CIA JSOC team has a full-on battle with the DGI, the intelligence agency of Cuba. So I think it's safe to say they've officially retconned Declassified. The Vet and Jay Leno In 2011, late night host Jay Leno had his crew place his face over Jonah Hill's face in the live action Modern Warfare 3 trailer, The Vet and the Noob. There's not really a joke in this video. It's literally just Jay Leno reading off Jonah Hill's lines. I thought that he would at least add like a joke or two, but uh... No, it's just his face over Jonah Hill's. The Mac port of Black Ops 3. The original Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2, and Call of Duty 4 were originally the only three Call of Duty games released for Mac devices. Now, I'm sure you could figure out a way to play other COD games on Mac, but they were never officially released for them. That was until Black Ops 3, but not in 2015, the year Black Ops 3 came out. Black Ops 3 would be released for the Mac in 2019, ported over to Mac by Aspire Media. As for the port itself, it's apparently not very good. You can actually get all of Black Ops 3's DLC for the Mac, so that's cool, so like all the DLC packs and Zombie Chronicles. But according to players and reviewers, the game not only launched basically dead, like there were no players online, but the game's frame rates were pretty mediocre, there was some weird texture issues, and a good amount of glitches in the game that were never patched. Since its release, there's been no other Call of Duty game released officially for Mac devices. The Resulka's 1 through 3 The Resulka is a spy ship featured in the Black Ops 1 campaign. It's the setting for the first half of the level Redemption, and plays a significant part in the game's story. This significance is probably what earned it getting some rep in Blackout. Although it's actually not rep. The cargo boat in the cargo docks area is actually called the Resulka 2, and it featured a completely different layout to the original boat. However, when the Blackout map got flooded during the Spectre Rising season, the Resulka 2 was replaced with a new cargo ship called the Resulka 3. Alistair Rhodes and Vanguard In the Vanguard Zombies map, Shinonuma Reborn, the character Alistair Rhodes is mentioned. This is extremely weird, because he was never part of the main zombie storyline. In fact, he wasn't even canon to it. Alistair Rhodes is from the Chaos storyline, which was an attempt by Treyarch to create a new zombies timeline. While never a playable character, Alistair was an extremely important character to the story of Chaos. This has led many people to speculate that the Chaos storyline is now canon to the Dark Aether storyline, but I personally don't think that's what's going on here. I think it just means that there's an alternate universe Alistair that exists in the Dark Aether timeline. It's not the same Alistair as the one from Chaos. And maybe by extension, the rest of the Chaos characters, like Scarlet or Diego, exist in the Dark Aether timeline as well. Personally, I'm all for them making a comeback. I think the Chaos storyline is pretty underrated. But who knows, maybe they are retconning the Chaos storyline to take place in the Dark Aether timeline. Formula One Car Kill Cam In the Modern Warfare 2 map, Crown Raceway, it's actually possible to get outside of the map and to not die by the return to map warning, though you still die, just in a different way. The only place you can go to is the actual racetrack the map takes place next to, and while you're on that track, a Formula One car will drive by and run you over. But not only that, you'll get a kill cam from the perspective of the Formula One car. VS Zubov in Call of Duty 2 VS Zubov is a character you don't actually ever see. You receive orders from him in the original Call of Duty during some loading screens for the Soviet levels, but you never actually see or meet him. However, you were going to see him in Call of Duty 2. Sound files have been found in Call of Duty 2 that mention Zubov by name. 
so it seems that he was going to appear in person in the game at one point. But for whatever reason, he was scrapped from the game. Personally, I think Commissar Letliv was originally going to be Zubov, but I don't have any evidence for that, it's just speculation. Call of Duty Elite Squad In October 2018, a full year before the release of Call of Duty Mobile, a trailer was leaked for a game titled Call of Duty Elite Squad. This was the original title for Call of Duty Mobile, however the trailer shows a fairly different game. A game with a variety of different challenge modes and a stamina feature which I can only assume was a way of limiting the amount of matches you could play a day. You could also see some scrapped characters in this trailer, like Harper. However, at the end of the trailer, you'll notice that the game isn't called Call of Duty Elite Squad. It's just Elite Squad. This was because the developer of the game, Tai Mai Studio, didn't know if they would be able to get the license for Call of Duty. So they developed two versions of the game. One without any references to Call of Duty, and one with. Activision liked the game, and Elite Squad would be renamed into Legends of War, and was released in a pre-alpha state exclusively in Australia in December of 2018. This version of the game is most known for its Zombies mode. This version of Zombies was almost like a campaign mission that you could play with friends. These linear levels took place in various parts of the Black Ops 2 Zombies map transit, like the farm and town. There were also boss fights like the Butcher and Cerberus. For whatever reason, this version of Zombies was scrapped, though aspects of this mode were later reused in later releases of Call of Duty Mobile, like the boss fights for example. Neversoft Tattoo In both Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2, you can find various enemies in the campaigns who have the logo of Neversoft Studios tattooed on their arm. For those that don't know, Neversoft Studios helped develop Modern Warfare 3 and Call of Duty Ghosts, and they merged with Infinity Ward in 2014. I guess in-universe, these soldiers were just huge Neversoft fans, or they just thought the logo was cool, which I mean, to be fair, they're right, it is a cool-ass logo. Booker T vs. Profit in February 2019, retired WWE wrestler Booker T sued Activision, claiming that they stole his character known as G.I. Bro. He played as G.I. Bro very early into his career as part of the Western Wrestling Alliance in the early 90s. He claimed that the character Prophet from Black Ops 4, only in Black Ops 4, he was fine in Black Ops 3, was based on G.I. Bro's design. This lawsuit didn't end well for him, as in June 2021, it was ruled that Activision didn't infringe on his copyrighted character. Activision claimed that Booker T didn't own the idea of an angry man with a scowling look, and that he presented some pretty mediocre evidence, including this poster. A poster that was modeled off of Dwayne The Rock Johnson from the neck down. So yeah, it doesn't look like they stole G.I. Bro. Vanguard's original multiplayer story. Alright, so this entry is pretty much just entirely speculation, but I think there's some evidence for this. I think the original Vanguard multiplayer season was going to be a direct continuation of the campaign, much like Modern Warfare 2019's and Cold Wars. I mean, Vanguard's story literally ends with the characters listing off places the Axis powers are hiding out. Places that I, along with other people, thought were teasing future multiplayer maps, like Argentina, Antarctica, the Bahamas, etc. This didn't end up happening, as Vanguard's multiplayer story was almost non-existent. Almost. In the first two seasons, we were introduced to Nebula 5, a new chemical weapon that, outside of the abandoned arms race mode, was never really explored. But the fact that there was an entire game mode about Nebula 5, and the cutscenes of the first two seasons of Vanguard's multiplayer story featured various characters discovering Nebula 5, just kind of shows that at one point, this was meant to be a larger storyline. But whatever that storyline was going to lead to was abandoned, as Season 3 was non-canon, and Season 4 featured a time jump to the 1970s, 
where Butcher and Arthur Kingsley were now mercenaries looking for gold. Then Season 5 was again non-canon, and then Season 6 was cancelled. I think Vanguard's multiplayer season was going to be split up into two halves. The first three were going to be about Task Force Vanguard taking out Nebula 5 bases, and the second half was going to jump to the 1970s and Task Force Vanguard were now going to be mercenaries, taking out German remnants hiding out in the Pacific or Europe, and tracking down gold. Perhaps even the legendary Lost Gold Train? I think that that train may have been involved because Season 4 had a huge emphasis placed on gold. Of course, this is all speculation, but it's my theory. What do you guys think? Overgrown Halloween so in 2007, Infinity Ward released a video called Call of Duty Happy Halloween that featured a soldier walking around the Call of Duty 4 map overgrown. He's just walking around taking in the view when suddenly he's killed by a sniper wearing a jack-o'-lantern. It's a pretty simple video, but it's notable because the version of overgrown that's shown off in the video isn't actually in Call of Duty 4 or even in Modern Warfare Remastered. It's a modified version of the scrapped multiplayer map, Overgrown Night. It's really weird that they took an already scrapped map and modified it exclusively for this video. Maybe there were plans at one point to release it to the public like Winter Crash, but that's just speculation. Talking Hot Dog In the Call of Duty Ghosts map, Strike Zone, if you throw a throwing knife into Ronnie the Hot Dog's... Uh, wrinkles, It'll actually make Ronnie talk. Hey kids, who's hungry? I am the Greek destroyer of hunger. Don't forget to try my world famous song. One, two, three, you're out. Play ball. Call of Duty Siege. Released in October 2016, Call of Duty Siege was a mobile strategy card game heavily influenced by Clash Royale. It had a cartoony art style and was heavily based on Infinite Warfare, although some characters and units were based on earlier games, like the Modern Warfare trilogy. In this game, you drop units into battle to take out enemy bases in either single player or PvP. Each unit costs some energy. And once you use that unit, you'll have to wait for your energy to go back up to either use that unit again or to use other units. The game never saw a full release, only being released in Australia, with rumors stating that the game was actually cancelled before its release, and it just got released in Australia for whatever reason. But I can't find any evidence about that rumor. Eventually, the game was delisted from stores, and now nobody can play it. AM General vs. Activision Have you ever noticed that after Call of Duty Ghosts in 2013, the Humvee has never shown up in another Call of Duty game besides remasters? You would think that they would have shown up in the new Modern Warfare games, or even Cold War. So how come they don't? Well, it's most likely because in 2017, AM General, the manufacturing company for the Humvee, sued Activision for using Humvees in their games without the company's permission or a license. This case lasted until 2020, when the courts sided with Activision. They said that Activision can use Humvees without a license, simply because of the First Amendment, as Activision was using Humvees in a creative way to portray war. Regardless of them winning the lawsuit, it seems that Activision don't really want to risk them suing them again, so Humvees just don't show up in Call of Duty games anymore. NZP In December 2010, the world was introduced to the game NZP. This is a fan-made game that was originally designed for the PSP, although you can actually play it on Android devices, Mac, PC, and even the Nintendo Switch. The idea was to bring the World at War and Black Ops 1 era of zombies to the handheld PlayStation console, the PSP. Created in the Quake engine, there are officially made maps for the project, however there's plenty of user-created maps you can download. And surprisingly, it's still in development, with the last update being in November 2021. There's Hellhounds, Perks, Wonder Weapons, The Mystery Box, 
remade World at War and Black Ops 1 maps, original maps, it's got a lot to offer. It's a pretty neat little homebrewed game that I actually played a bit of back in 2013. In fact, my very first video was about this game. What a great description. That's just, that's just stellar writing. Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered, Zombies Easter Egg. In the Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered level, The Gulag, if you throw a grenade into this little hole in the cell door to cell 227, and then run back to the guard post and look at this TV, a zombie will be shown on the screen, and a zombie's screeching sound can be heard. This zombie is running around in a prison cell, and he has glowing yellow eyes. And, uh, that's it. After this extremely brief video, the TV turns off, and if you want to do the easter egg again, you gotta replay the level. Now what's interesting about this easter egg is that it was discovered in 2023, while the game came out in 2020. So it took three years for anyone to figure out this small little zombie's easter egg. I know it'd be similar to Mob of the Dead and Blood of the Dead, but doesn't a gulag sound like a really cool idea for a zombies map? Ghost voice actor controversy. So Ghost has had three different voice actors. Not as much as Hudson, but his voice actors changing between games is a bit controversial. Originally, in Modern Warfare 2019's Warzone season, Jeff Leach was the voice actor for Ghost and was presumably going to return in Modern Warfare 2. However, in May 2021, sexist comments made by Jeff Leach in 2020 and once in 2017 resurfaced online. And some of these clips weren't just him saying like sexist stuff, but also saying sexist stuff directly to women, and at one point even declared that the streamer Zombie Unicorn just relied on her breasts for views. Yeah, he said some pretty vile things. And in response, on May 8th, 2021, Activision cut all ties with Jeff Leach. Leach responded to this controversy by saying that the clips were taken out of context and that he was responding to a troll. Eating.bic Hidden away in the game files for the GameCube ports of Call of Duty Finest Hour, there's a secret video titled Eating.bic. This is a really weird video. It's a video of Spark Unlimited developers having an eating contest on May 20th, 2004. Oh hey, I'm, re I'm recording this audio on May 20th. What are the odds? Anyways, some of the things they had to eat were four pounds of beans, one quart of turkey gravy, four chili dogs with everything on it, and a large order of chili cheese fries. There was also the mint challenge, where people had to put two breath strips, one hot ginger candy, one chocolate mint, three sour chewy beans, one vitamin C chewable, one cough drop, and one intense mint in their mouth at once. It's unknown if this was meant to be an unlockable video in the game, or it was just some funny video thrown into the code. Regardless of any of that, I demand that the Call of Duty gravy guzzle bucket be a weapon charm in a Call of Duty game. Alright, and that's it. That's the uh, Call of Duty Iceberg Part 2. Uh, I do not think there will be a Part 3. Um, sorry if you wanted one. But yeah, that's uh, that's that. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, it was a fun time going back to the Call of Duty series, although I've never left it. I still play it regularly. So um, Yeah, next time we're going to do a Part 3 to a video, to an Iceberg, I should say. Hope you're excited for that one. It's been a long time coming, and uh, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Um, I'll make more Call of Duty content in the future, just not icebergs, I don't think. Like, uh, comment, uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I don't I don't normally ask this. Um, I should probably ask this more in videos, just to subscribe, because I feel like that's I feel like it's a necessary evil. Like you like you kinda have to. Um I don't I I I always just feel bad doing it. I feel almost like dirty. Like it's like a, it's like a, a bad thing to do. I don't know. Uh but yeah, I I don't know. I might. I, I'll, I'll probably start doing that a little bit more. 
I don't know. But yeah, that's the video. Uh, have a good one. And uh, if you're watching this on the day it was uploaded, uh, May 23rd, uh, it's my birthday. So that's pretty cool. And if you're not watching it on May 23rd, then it's not my birthday. That's pretty cool too, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> have a good one. Uh, stay safe and all that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fight with anything in the resistance. Options are nice, but I take what I can get. In my hands, any weapon is that much better. SMG, my favorite weapon. I'm not afraid of direct confrontation. Ask anybody. Whatever is offered, master the weapon. I'm a submachine gun connoisseur. 